Hey, hey, uh, hello, yeah, yeah. welcome to episode three, yes, the big three, of Channel JPEG, where we discuss all things NFTs, but more specifically art and those making art in this space. We'll try to uncover and understand what's going on, the current market trends, uh, what's pumping, what's dumping, and all the exciting, innovative work that's being made and everything in between. Sitting here with Mike. Mike, what's happening? What's going on, Stash? How are you? Not bad, not bad, you know, just, uh, yeah, recovering from this marathon, physically a little out of it. Um, marathon runner. Marathon runner, yep, second one. Uh, don't want to talk about my time, this wasn't good, but uh, happy I did it. You know, much much like life, it is a marathon, and it's just, uh, you know, takes what it takes to get there. Um, I'm sure there's an NFT analogy in there somewhere, right? There, there definitely is. Yeah, I was going to go there. And then I was like, nah, just let that be. Um, but yeah, so uh, the market has been pretty, I don't know. I'm kind of exhausted by it. I'm kind of exhausted by the bear market. The art still seems to be pumping. Generative art, art blocks is good. Uh, you and I have talked about AI art a lot and what's happening with that. That definitely seems to be at least on the horizon as something that's like, a, you know, going to make a, a big impact. Um, Can I ask you a question? Bobblers. Yeah, go ahead. Do you even like NFTs anymore? Sometimes I'm like, what's an NFT even mean to me now? Yeah, so true. I mean, w when I think about buying like a 10K PFP NFT, I don't, I don't actually think about it. It doesn't cross my mind. Same, um, same. You know, I will almost guarantee you I will never buy a 10K PFP ever again. I'm unless pretty sure. It's a crypto punk. Yeah. Yeah. Crypto punk. Ah. Uh, I flirt with Doodles. I flirt with Clone X. Nope, not interested. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, and I, not I, because I, the team or the. I, I just don't see how. How does that work anymore? Well, too, it's like why are all, they even coming out with them? Right, with the Reddit entities that dropped with like so rare, you know, with like all the like people who are like playing fantasy basketball and so rare, whatever. You buy players for like thirty bucks. You buy players for two hundred bucks. It's, bucks. It's, it's a really big deal. NFTs, like you know. We have been buying them for thousands of dollars. And I just don't know if like when this all happens and mass adoption occurs or whatever, if someone is going to spend, besides maybe a crypto punk and maybe an ape, if someone is going to spend $120,000 on one of these historical or something like that, again, crypto punks, it's, we're talking, it's a very different thing, right? It's a lot of money, man. And I love the way everybody kind of just like throws the numbers around and talks about it. No, no, no. These are huge sums of money, you know? In some places huge. in America, you buy a house with that. I know. Maybe not it's anymore insane. with the interest rates, but it's it's bananas. So I think, I don't know. I don't see the point in it. Generative art, um, uh, art in general, you know, like I said, I, you know, I've been buying stuff on Tezos and some stuff on, on ETH. I think also, too, the fees, you know? That's, like, why I went over there. I know, like, there's some art that's coming up on Solana, um, I just think that that's where it is. Utility passes probably, you know, I think those things will, will last in some way. Um, but NFTs as collectibles in terms of like 10 K, you know, PFP projects, I just don't care. But I mean, I know people do, right? Like everybody has a PFP online, right? But are you going to spend $10,000 for one of those? For, what are you Hell getting? No. So you can buy a hoodie so you can buy a black hoodie with like something so you can walk it? down the street and wear it and be like i got this for what you know what i mean yeah i just think yeah i think 10k pfp i, I don't know i just think it's that that's over for now at least the thing it reminds me of like when i think like the digital collectible or then like this fo this like future idea of like what it'll be or what you can do with it in the future and I just think like when we all saw Back to the Future 2 the first time and he had the Nikes that like, you know, laced themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's, I feel like we have this idea of like the future and like get this thing. It's like smooth looking in the picture and it floats and it turns or, you know, or on the complete opposite side of that, the art is ridiculous or, or it's like badly drawn and it's, but it's like for the culture. Right. I don't know. It's all just like, it's like, 
we're all basing these ideas on something I think is like impossible to come true. You yeah. know? Yeah. And, and but it's almost yeah, like I the, think we, yeah. The past is like, is predicting the future really. Right. I mean, it's like, if, is this, I, I, th I also think utility around NFTs is going to change dramatically over the next couple of years. You know, I mean, what do people, what do we really, I mean, airdrops like that meta, you know, is that like still a thing? Oh, we get an airdrop. Well, it's just like more NFTs in the space. It's like another, another project under an umbrella. It's just like, why? Why How do I was want... it back in the day when the air oh, it's the hit. best, man. God, it just was like, oh, people just clamoring for that stuff. You know, you just like, I mean, okay. So all that being said, I did buy an oddity, you know, with the idea of possibly burning it to get a mythic, right? Because I'm interested in being in, uh, in, you know, the proof ecosystem. And even with an oddity, I still am, but you know, what's going to happen with the mythic, um, yeah, everybody's sick right now all over the country. As far as I know, it's like, I'll mute mess. my mic when I cough. I'm sorry. Good man. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I just, you know, I, I see that there's utility behind that. Right. But like to just, I don't know. I mean, I think like something like ferocious, I think that there's something happening there, like with the paint drops or the paint drips and all that sort of thing that like could become something it could be used later, you know? So you know, if these like kind of businesses and platforms are being built out, then I say, yeah, cool. But, you know, just airdrops for airdrops just seems silly to me. I don't know. You know, I know like you know, the Utes thing was really big for people. People were really into that. Um, but I think it just comes down to, and if I'm being totally honest, it's just about greed and getting money. It's in, in my 100%. opinion too. It's, it's just like with like no artist royalties. Why shouldn't, like, that's part of the whole, like, deal of, like, artists making art in the space is that, like, oh, wow, when it's sold now, you can still make money off of it. You can still survive. And I've seen, you know, numbers thrown around that, like, you know, I don't know what it is, you know, the huge majority of what artists are actually making is coming from primary sales and not secondary sales. But, like, if I own that art or whatever and I sell it, I obviously greedily want to get all the money, right? But I'm still paying the fees to like OpenSea or whatever, you know, um, uh, platform it's on that's being sold, you know? Um, I guess also like as an artist, it's something that I'm like, dude, really? That was like such a beautiful selling point to like, why do I want to make art and put it on chain, you know? Somehow it got mixed up with the idea of like royalties for the PFP project and a company versus a versus an artist. It's like- right. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I mean, sure, you want to skate <clears throat> Yuga's whatever and sell it and go and go around that and use a, pro a platform to sell one of their, you know, three or four major things. I understand that, I guess. Uh, but, you know, if you want to sell a one-on-one something then, and you want to do it over the counter, I, you know, I think I've been using eBay for like 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. And... Every time I sell something, I look at how much eBay fees are. I look at PayPal fees. I look at all of the money that goes to different places. Mm -hmm. And then I realize that I sat on the couch. I took a photo of it. I uploaded it. I did almost no work in the listing, selling, promoting, whatever, right? So at the end of the day, I had to pay something to get my item sold. Could mm -hmm. I have put it on Facebook marketplace and said, meet me in the parking lot? Sure. Right. That's narrows the scope of people who can maybe see what they want to buy from me. And secondly, it's more risky, puts me more, it puts me more out in the open. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden I got to like take the money from someone and now I have money in my pocket and I got to, you know, so it's, so, you know, sure. You want to do an over the counter trade or you want to skirt it then I guess that's your prerogative, but also know that like that stuff is there for a reason. And at the end of the day, it's like, no, you, this, there's no free lunch. No everyone free lunch. thinks, I, everyone thinks that they deserve to get the thing done for the cheapest amount of money or for free. And there's just no such thing as, there's just no such thing as free. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Right. Yeah. 
Exactly. So like, why don't you just be grateful that you can like buy and sell a digital thing that you never actually even touched with your actual fingers and make money. And like, so you're not going to get $15,000. You're going to get $14,190. Like, right. You know, okay, right. cool. Right. Right. And if that really rustles your inner D gen feathers, then I guess don't sit, don't, don't do the fees. You know, yeah. but yeah. like, know that that's probably screwing over somebody somewhere. I know, but I think too, it's like, you know, a big concern of mine is that basically this space is just going to go like every other space, every finance, anything dealing with money. I mean, that's the bottom line is like, we had such a huge run up because it was like, people were making money, but money was just being given out freely. Right. I mean, if you look at yoga with like the drops that they offered to people at that time, like it's just free money. You know, even ApeCoin, I remember being on Spaces when ApeCoin dropped and people just following the price and being like, I just sold, you know, 14,000 Ape or whatever, like insane numbers or $14,000 worth of Ape. It's just like free money. And yeah, I don't know if that's going to happen again. Uh, and I think everybody, yeah, I just think it, it's, it's just, you know, it's all greed and everybody just thinks they deserve something. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, uh I don't know, I guess TBD, right? We're just gonna sit here and, and wait for it to kind of shake out. I don't know if it'll actually ever be over. I think you know, you know, it will be it will be platform dependent and what So what did OpenSea to say today? They said that they are gonna enforce it? Uh there's gonna be like I guess like an update to the contract to where it can be enforced. I, I don't I don't fully understand. I guess something I'd have to go through and read and like you know, fully understand all the jargon behind it, but um, I believe that they're trying to make it enforceable. I don't know if they're making it so that they don't have to enforce it, but that the artist will enforce it. How are they going to do that? I guess it would be just written in contracts, right? Like didn't Tyler Hobbs do something for um, QQL where it could be sold on um, X2Y2 or whatever? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, you know, maybe it's going to be a similar situation to that. I don't know. Um yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I think that's going to, you know, that's just going to play out for a long time. All of the royalty, you know, things. And I think also, too, it's kind of like it's an issue right now because we're in a bear market. People aren't making as much money. You know, it's like if you quit your job to flip NFTs and now it's like, you know, not what you thought it was going to be. You're looking to, you know, for every dollar possible, right? I mean, that's the deal. So, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but then again, you know, it's we, we had this discussion, I think, last time where it's like, you know, what is art, right? Is a 10 KPFP project art? Is it not art? Is that person an artist? You know, I, I was listening to a space this morning and they were talking about, you know, art blocks and generative art and a lot of the stuff that's, that's you know, really pumping. And then they mentioned um, another project with a 5K supply. And they were like, well, this supply is just too high. But it's from a legit traditional art, you know, someone that's a very big artist right now and is, is having... Um, exhibitions and whatnot, you know, um, and it's not moving, you know, it's sitting, sitting at like 0.3 or something. So, you know, well, 5,000 is pretty high. That's pretty high. It is right. I mean, considering for like art, I mean, even if you were, if it wasn't a bear market, if it was a bull market, then yeah, people would probably be buying it for double, triple that, but like right. 5,000 of anything from one person or one place is that's a pretty high demand. I mean, a but, high supply, but I would like to still get like a max pain. Right. And there's what 7,000 something of those. Sure. But that's also half the price that it was. Right. So the price reflects that. Right, right, right. And there's only one X copy. Right. True. So it's like that there's that too. It's like, you know, how do you, and, and what could this honestly, like, what could this bring us like later on? Right. Right. And I think like, you know, if you, the person never does another drop again, that's an open edition. Then in 10 years, you keep thinking like, whoa, what is it gonna, you know, it's like, I should have, I should have, I should have, I should have. Yeah. I've been looking at that like for, well, I don't know, weeks now. I'm like, oh, no. Uh, uh, and now I think it's at 0.7 and I'm like, oh, dude, I'm going to buy a 0.7. Do I want to wait till it goes to like 0.6? Is it going to go to 0.6? Is it really 0.1 know. that much of a deal to me? I mean, what's 0.1 right now? hundred and something. It's not nothing. Hundred something bucks. You know, I'm not, I could afford it if I wanted to get in, you know, but. Right. 
Yeah, I don't know. You know, the best, I think, entry for any X copy thing, but it's like not very fun to look at, is the pixels that he did with Decca. So it's like mm-hmm. one pixel relates relates to one pixel on the picture of right click share guy it's called not not right click save as but right click uh-huh. share uh-huh. it's like a more pixelated of that image and there's only 900 and something i think of them and each one is like right now like you could get one for like 0.7 i think or something like that so mm. but it's just a, it's literally just a block of color Interesting. So it's, but it's huh. like you know I know, so it's not fun to look at. Did they just drop that recently? I don't even know that. Um, I think that came out a couple months ago. Oh, okay. Huh. Yeah, I think that was a couple months ago. I'll have to, I gotta look so, at that you know, that's a pretty low amount for that price. But again, it's like literally. And then you can like, um, through DECA, I think you like allow it to be shown. And then like there's like an ever-changing oh, yeah, pixel of pixel drawing of that thing of like how many people are allowing their pixels to be shown or not one six five right now for a block of color right wow some of them some, uh, wow incredible yeah all right hey man hey whatever, whatever it takes at this point you know if you just want that's like that's like buying a signature basically yeah you know yeah. So like at that point, then it's like you just want the signature of X copy, like it came from the wallet. Got that right? Right. You want something that looks like an X copy that look that's very high supply, Max Payne, etc. Max Payne you can use it as a PFP too, right? It's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean I think it's cool, you know, and I think, or well, I guess I, I I have this idea or hope that like it will become something else or it gets you into something else, you know, blah 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 that sort of thing. Um, because, I, I mean, when I think about, like, NFTs and art and all that stuff now, you know, it's like, historically, those projects have done really well. X Copy is, you know, obviously, like you said, there's only one. You know, when I look at other art, there, sometimes there's, like, no precedent for some of these things being what they are. Like, it's an artist I'm thinking of. I don't want to mention the names. But their work we don't was... Wanna, you don't want to give away the alpha on the podcast? Yeah, well, well maybe I will, but his work at first was like 0.21. It's like you could buy now for like 0.21, released something a couple, maybe a couple months ago. It's like, I don't know what it's at now, four? For this for this new collection. So it's like, there's no historical precedent for that artist, right? And then they're like, mm. there are several people that have released on Art Blocks recently where I feel that way. I'm like, you have things like, I'll just say Tara Donovan, who released that QWERTY project. I think it's at 0.9 now. You know, it had a big run up over the weekend and over the last couple of weeks. And it's kind of, you know, been a bit up and down. But, uh, you know, that seems to be getting some shine right now, which I think is very cool. So I, I think her work is great. Um, I don't know, man. It, I think all of this is, is really a crapshoot. There are some that are tried and true and you know everybody's going to go through them. And when you look through the analytics or whatever, you look at wallets, you're going to see those names that we all know as collectors. And that's great. And I think that that's a, a good signal, you know. Uh, a bullish signal, but um, otherwise, I don't know. I just think it's like, am I going to buy blah, blah, blah? I, I guess it comes down to like, do I like this? You know, do I think it's worth it? Is this is this my vibe? Um, but then too, I think I'd rather go on another chain that's cheaper, less fees, and like the art is going to be cheaper. You know, same artist, cheaper art, right? I mean, is that like, Am I being cheap or am I devaluing things, you know, or am I not, you know, understanding the big picture there? I don't know. But I think like, yeah, I would rather go to like Tezos or whatever. It's just, I, you know, there was a piece rele- released on Art Blocks last week and I just went to Tezos and bought like the same artist, like a piece from the same artist <laughs> for like a much cheaper price, you know? What's wrong like, with that? Nothing yeah, wrong with that. I dig the art. I think the art is cool. I think the artist is great. And I was like, why should you just buy this then? Why not? You know? It, it just like, I always like buying shit that was out first anyway. Right. You know? Well, that's what I think, too. I'm like, this is the Genesis project, and it's, like, that much cheaper. Like, why wouldn't I want to have that? You know? That shows you, too, how many people are not looking. Not that, that I think that's right or wrong, but, like, but just shows you how many people are not looking, historically not looking at, like, 
everything an artist has done. It's just like art yeah. blocks. I have to have it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, not everything on art blocks is good. Yeah. And you know, not everything on from every artist is good. Right. So, you know, or, or, okay. Good is subjective, whatever. Completely. Right. Like, right. You know, the thing that like, is like, will captivate someone, you know, versus not. Right. Um, so whatever, you know, that's why, again, you got to have a thesis and just kind of do, do, do the thing. I'm, I'm scared of other chains. Just, I'm scared of other coins in general, just because I've been around this stuff so long and that you just see stuff. Not that Tezos isn't, hasn't shown itself to be reliable. It has, right. But like stuff, this stuff just comes and goes, right. Yeah. Um, you yeah. never know. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, I think, you know, there are people that are spending big money over there too, for sure. Right. Just like Solana, um, or any other chain that's, you know, ha has some kind of like notoriety at this point, people talk about it, people are, you know, buying the coin and all that sort of thing or the token. Um, yeah, you know, it was funny too, like Solana just like had that big, that big jump here recently. I think it went up 15% when they announced that like Google was like going to be a node operator or something like that. And then it's dropped all the way back down. I think it's like, 1% higher than what it was before the announcement, you know, it, it's just, there's no way to like, there's no way to actually figure out what's going to happen in, in this market and who's going to buy what, and when they're going to do it. And like, uh, you know, and it almost seems like when people deliver, that's when like things are like go down. Speculation is everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's the best thing to do is to just keep people in a perpetual state of rumor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this big thing's coming. This big thing's coming, you know, and big it's things like, coming. Yeah. So big things coming. I mean, it I think it'll like, be, yeah, no, I think it'll be interesting to ha see what happens like with doodles. Everybody's been fighting doodles because they're not, you know, making announcements on Twitter. They're not communicating with the, the community, you know, all that sort of thing, you know, the way that like web three people want, but, um, I'm interested to see if they go, go against the grain of like what we have all decided web three should be. And, they build out a business, right? Like a theme park, whatever all the like crazy stuff is that they, you know, will have. And the bottom line is then people that own doodles or any, any collection, like you're not a shareholder, you own the PF. Right. Right. So, you know, at what point do these founders say, look, man, we have like, you know, we have a gold mine here. Like, let's go make stuffed animals and toys and, you know, all that sort of thing. Like, why would you not, you know? Right. Um, yeah. Somebody that was posting online. I just thought of like all of the projects that I wanted to buy, like, you know, Oh man, not even that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. Four months ago mm -hmm. that are like, I haven't heard of, I, I mean, like, like nothing. Yeah. It's really crazy. So there's so many still to be around. If you're still around, so many, if you're still around, it's like, yeah, it's incredible. I mean, what are there really five, 10 collections that really matter or that, that have like some kind of staying power at this point, even though it's been, something like that, you know, just a couple of years. If. Sorry. It's hard out here. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, yeah, I agree. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see like how these brands now, you know, like with the Starbucks, uh, NFT thing, you know, or whatever they're calling them. Right. Um, Odyssey. You know, Odyssey. Yeah. I I'm sure. I'm sure that that's, I'm excited be, about that. Yeah. Dude, it's on Polygon, you know, they're like next to no fees. It's, it's easy for people to do. I'm sure there's some kind of like, they're doing like a custodial wallet or whatever. Um, do I think that these things, perhaps some of them, you know, will sell for big money if that's what people are into, but. I also think it'll be like, uh, we'll be a digital collectible and it'll be like, oh yeah, like some money here, some money there, you know, like I never got into Pokemon. I was like a little, uh, uh past the, the prime on that, but like not every Pokemon is like the, what's the card called the Charizard or whatever. Charizard. Yeah. Yeah. So like what right. are the rest of them selling for 20 bucks, 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. It's like exactly. baseball cards, right? Totally. You know? And I think it'll. I, I, I eventually think a lot of this stuff will go to that, you know, it'll be just like digital collectibles, 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, it's just been such a crazy run when I think about it, you know? So what's it going to be? It's going to be 
NFTs that are Starbucks related? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I guess you're going to get money for, or to get money. Uh, you know, you're going to get gonna, that money. You get that money. I forget what they're calling them. Journey, journey passes or something, something like that. So I'm sure it's like, oh, I bought like five pumpkin spice lattes. So I'm going to get this particular NFT uh, or journey pass, whatever it's called. They've given it a name. They're not called NFTs, which also is the meta right now. Stamps. Do not call it an NFT. Yeah. Is it journey stamps? Something to do with journey. Stamps. But I think it is. Yeah, uh, it has to do, like you said, the Odyssey and all that. Yeah. So don't call it an NFT. Hmm. Um, Dig digital yeah. collectible. Digital collectible seems to be, you know, popular. Um, so yeah, but dude, it's going to be, I mean, that's huge for, for NFTs. And if we want to consider it for the space or whatever, you know, it's a huge deal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I think everything's going to shake out. I also think, you know, we talked about this. I'm not a financial advisor and I am not giving any advice whatsoever, but I haven't read anything where the macro has changed and where we are not in for like more pain for like oh. next year, even, you know, like, so the, I, I, you know, I'm just not in a position where I want to spend 10 grand on something, or I want to just, you know, where, where I'm, I'm willing to speculate. And that there are other people that are flush with ETH, flush with whatever, you know, um, that, you know, perhaps they're even drowning in that ETH they have so much. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> I, I, I think I think prices will continue to, to go down. I think the market will go down. I'm sure that, you know, volume will go down, all that stuff. And I don't know, maybe that's the time to be ready, you know? Because I think two people talk about to buy, like, man. but do you think it's going to go even lower? I mean, I, listen, we're never going to time the markets. You know? Right. So let me say this. Right now, if you could buy anything, well, okay, besides a crypto punk, <laughs> what would you buy? Like one item? One. You have enough to buy whatever you want. I have enough to buy whatever I want. One item, piece of art, or PFP. <clears throat> hmm. um, I would probably want to buy a piece of art. I'd want to buy something that I believe in and I like what it looks like and that I could potentially hang it on my wall in some way, way, shape or form. So I think as an artist and as someone who I, I've been obsessed with the QQL for a long time. Um, well, I mean, not a long time as, you know, if, as long as it's right. been out a month or something like that that uh you know even in the last week or so i've sort of haven't really been generating stuff that much but i would buy a qql pass and i would mint one of the seeds that i made like a sort of a this figure that i call juno that kind of looks like a person kind of mm. um, because then it would be like i would be taking a risk on myself mm -hmm. right um something that i created it would add my art or my generation, my parametric art into uh, the ether of that. And it would also cement sort of having a foot in this generative art thing um, that uh, I don't think it's like you can't really buy that anywhere else. You know, right. you could like go and get a snow fro or a chromy squiggle, but it's like, that's just like, hey, can I be part of the already flourishing thing? Whereas like QQL is like kind of new enough where mm -hmm. I feel like I could still get into the beginning of that journey, right? Like I want the journey. Any artist or, or, or like piece of art that I've ever bought, whether it's someone that I've known or it's contemporary or like they're trying to get their name off the ground or, you know, not that I've ever bought a Banksy, but, um, but like, I wanted part of that journey. I wanted to be like along for that ride. So I think a QQL pass. I think I would do yeah. that and I would mint something. Good you know? answer. Uh, definitely be art related. 
I mean, I've definitely discussed my love of uh, Memories of Key Lin many, many times. But I do think that that's something that, like, I, you know, I can, I can achieve. I could reach, you know, relatively soon. Would yeah. it be a squiggle? No, hmm. no. Would it be Fidenza? God mode Fidenza? If I could have any Fidenza? You know? Um, right. Do I love Fidenzas that much? Or am I interested, again, in just like being part of that community? Or I, I think what you said is so important about like being along for the ride with the artist, you know, wanting to support the artist. Um, or uh, maybe I'm putting words in your mouth here, but um, there is something about like, yeah, kind of like being along the, 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 the journey with, with someone, you know? Um, damn. Yeah. I, I don't know if I have an answer to my own question, but I guess if it ends up maybe a ringer. Right. Those are, I mean, I'm not against the, the, the big ones, you know? I mean, yeah, it's, it's obvious. It's like, oh yeah, fine. Um, yeah, the QQL pass is pretty amazing though. Maybe that seems like such an, an, an amazing unknown. Maybe the QQL pass, you know, because I mean, God only knows like what you could, you know, who could come along and generate a seed and then you have that pass, you know, it's like, it could be amazing. I think the opportunities there are pretty, pretty intense. Um, right. Like when that marketplace hits, all of a sudden you could buy something you really like, or you like what it looks like. Yeah. Or turns out so-and-so has been anonymously making seeds. Turns out, you know, who knows that? Whatever, X copy, right? I, yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah. it just turns, you know, I think there's, like, a lot of cool, there's a lot of cool sort of facets to that pro to that project. And yeah, if not that, then I, I would say probably, I would say, like, just to finally get a Chromie squiggle and just have that and sort of bank that and be like, okay, I got that thing. Yeah. I know. I would like to just get one, put it away, and it's just going to sit there forever. And I'd be totally happy with that. You know? Right. Uh, I, mean, I would definitely so use that as my let's, PFP. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> would you? You know? Yeah, definitely. 100%. Yeah. No problem. I mean, is it possible that generative art is not going to be as popular yes. in the future as everyone thinks it it's going to be? I, I, I think it's very possible. I, I think I'm fascinated by it. I'm fascinated by like the the idea of like, you know, using code and computers and all that stuff to generate art. But I also think that it's been around for a long time. Um, now it's on chain, you know, and obviously we have platforms like art blocks and, and um, that sort of thing that are very popular now. Again, it depends on supply. Um, and it, but I mean, it is, it is all speculation and hype, right? Even that stuff. Like, I think some of those pieces are incredible. They are absolutely incredible. Um, but you look at it and you see like a Fidenza and then there's something else that's like slightly different than Fidenza, but it's kind of the same. And, I, you know, there are all these copycats. And I guess it's that way with everything, right? Music, film, art, everything. It's all the same. But I definitely think that there could come a time where generative art isn't this huge play that it is now. One of ones, totally different story. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously. But yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think it could be, it could come down for sure. It just seems so like, it's trendy, it's popular, it's cool. I mean, it's a very cool mechanic. The fact that you can do it like that, it's kind of like a slot machine a little bit, but yeah. I just wonder, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And also I like, so. everything is pumping right now, so it's probably going to come down. Yeah. It's really wild, man. I mean, I wake up like, especially on the weekends, I found like art just like, just rockets, you know? And I check it mm. Monday morning, have a look. And it's like, dude, what happened overnight? Like what was, you know, like I didn't check anything yesterday. And then I got home and of course I looked right away and I was just like, dude, oh, great. Well, I missed all that. Didn't I? Wonderful. Right. So right. yeah, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, you have to really, e either you're thinking you're going to flip it immediately or you got to be willing to like ride this thing out for months or years. I think, you know, it will be very totally. interesting to see what these things look like in five years, two years, things are moving so fast. What does this look like in two years? You know? So, right. I mean, I guess in 2025 we'll, uh, or 2024, we'll, we'll have a, have a recap, you know? 
So do you think, maybe this is a good place for us to sort of ponder on and then and then finish up. Do you, do you feel like artists, I'll put, this, I'll put say artists and companies, right? Let's just say NFTs in general. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but do you feel like artists and companies who make 10 PFP collections, 10,000 PFP collections are responsible for maintaining this floor price, this idea and like keeping things going? Or do you think it's okay for companies or for artists to like, and actually I don't really see artists doing this, but I guess I see companies doing it being like, we, well, we don't talk about floor price. We don't talk about floor price, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But like, let's say floor price is tanking and you know, they just keep, as long as they're still doing what they said they were going to do, mm -hmm. or do you feel like they need to do something to like keep it going? I guess my question with that is like, like, what should they be doing? Right? Like, do they need to, how, you know, how do you, how do you help your floor price? You know, do you get so-and-so to tweet about it? You know what I mean? It's like, if something isn't, you know, pumping the way people think it should, like what, yeah, what is the answer there? Is it because you're not tweeting? Is it because there's not enough activity in the discord? Is there, dude, I haven't really honestly been in discord i used to live in discord i very rarely ever go in there anymore it's too much it's like just people like there's just a lot of ch chatter and noise and there's not a lot of like information and sometimes it's good to like talk to people you know obviously that I've become friends with but yeah i don't know if it's up to them i don't know I, the market decides right people can put out amazing things and dude you see it i see it with like all of these uh, drops of art, you know, it's like, oh, it was 0.3, boom, rocketed to 0.7, back down to 0.29, goes up to 1.2. So it's like, what do you want? I don't know, you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I have some, I actually bought some 10k PFPs like recently, just aped in, just like whatever, you know, a buddy was like, oh, let's do it. And I was like, yeah, fine. Silly. Floor price sucks. It's like, I actually got in the, into the Discord and I was like, so like, you know, so happy to be a part of the community or whatever. And then somebody was like, oh, cool. You arrived just in time for it to retrace and go back down to X, Y, Z. And I was like, cool. And you know what it did? It retraced. And it went right back down and that's where it's sitting. And so, it, you know, they are delivering what they said they would do. They're doing the things, but people don't care. So how do you get people to all of a sudden really care about your project you know yeah um not everybody can be a zuki and release a gold skateboard for however you know five thousand dollars or whatever the heck it was you know it just doesn't always work that way so right <clears throat> i don't know if that's a, well, it's not you a know artists answer. artists will get sort of pandered by their collectors if they uh you know release stuff just even traditional artists yeah right yeah. If they release stuff and, or if they have a show and it doesn't sell out and they've been selling shows out now, they don't right? like, so it's like, it's, I get, it's not like this is new to NFTs, right? You know, there's always been that thing of like, maybe that's why you want to have a manager or someone who like, yeah, knows the scene or whatever. And, and dare I say the traditional art market is maybe a little more sophisticated and been around that a bit more to understand like obviously if somebody's losing hundreds of thousands of dollars they're going to be upset by that but i just think that we in nft world have become so accustomed to things just like mooning selling for 10x and getting out and and being like yeah yeah it's you know so yeah i just don't but i don't think that that's um realistic and will be like what happens like on the timeline, you know? And I don't, what if the floor price goes lower than what the initial asking price was? Then like, let's say, I don't right. know, whatever. You sold something for, for one ETH. Now it's 0.5. Do you have a responsibility to at least get it back to where it was, what you sold it for as a company? Uh, Again, I guess the same th answer applies. Like, how do you, uh, how do you do that? I mean, I guess if there's like a company like, 
what's like a traditional company, Coca-Cola? I don't know, right? I mean, maybe this is a bad example because their stock seems to be doing really well, but they are beholden to their shareholders, right? Like if the stock goes down, then they have to come up with a new product or new project or new way of selling things. So I don't know. Is that the same way? Maybe, you know, can it happen on like a three day timeline where it's like price goes down and then everybody's like, okay, you guys have to come up with something. You got to sell hoodies. You got to do something. It can't happen that way. It doesn't work that way, you know? And I think that that's what everyone expects, but, um, I don't know. Like, you mean like if the roadmap is just not hitting and everybody's just like, yeah, we don't want hoodies now. I don't want stickers. I don't (laughs) want like, you know, another airdrop. I want like, I want this floor price to go up so I can sell, so I can exit this project. Right. Mm, I don't know. You know, I don't know if that's All this shit's wild west, man. It just is. And I think, you know, dude, this is going to look so different in six months. It's going to look so different in a year. Um, Next time, I think we'll talk about AI uh, a bit more. I know we discussed that a bit earlier. That's going to completely yep. change the landscape. And the next, in my opinion, six months to a year, completely change everything. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's talk about it next time. See? Word up. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for joining. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in, checking this out. Um, Thank you. What do you say? Spotify, YouTube, like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Let everybody Tell know. Tell everyone you know. Retweet. Share it. Retweet. Channel find JPEG. Us, find us at Channel JPEG on Twitter, at the the Haymaker, at the Mike Elf, and at Haymaker Studio. That's right. And um, not financial advice, none of this. Do your own research. Absolutely. Do your own research. And uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Later.